and welcome to another educative and informative episode of African Student Voices on AAU TV. We are coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities, Accra, Ghana. I am your host, Ajemona Chedako. And don't forget to follow us on our social media handles at AAU TV on Twitter and Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube. Today we're discussing extracurricular activities, its impact on students. And before I introduce you, the guest I have for today, we'll have to go for a quick pause. When we come back, I'll let you know. Dumela Ma Africa Amat. Magadini Mose. Hola todos. Bonjour. Nagaiswa. Kuya da. Salivon Nani Lonke. Moribuanji. Hello. We are. Africa University. Africa University has brought the U.S. to me where I couldn't go, and now is taking Africa to the world. And I am Africa. As a community of diverse cultures and languages, Africa University is passionate about moving the agenda of Pan-Africanism. Africa University, the dream is alive. I'm studying medical laboratory sciences on the STEM scholarship. Africa University has the best malaria research lab in the entire country. So if you're interested in lab sciences or conducting any sort of research, then Africa University is the place to be. Africa University is the school of hope in the value of dreams. Come and join me. We're going to make Africa better than before. You might have not been to all the African countries. Come to Africa University and see Africa happening every day an institution that offers a world-class education system. Are you thinking of being a global person? Thinking of enhancing your business and leadership skills? Why not choose Africa University? As a working mother and a wife, through one of its many flexible programs, Africa University has afforded me an opportunity to pursue my master's degree in intellectual property. As former SRC president, Africa University sharpened my leadership skills a university that rewards excellency and hard working. Being a Catholic nun, I came to Africa University with a lot of mixed feelings. I was scared, a bit hesitant, and wondering how was I going to manage in a United Methodist institution. But you know what? I've experienced a vibrant, God-fearing, ecumenical community. Welcome to Africa University. Sign up today and come and work with some of Africa's finest young talent. Whatever your background or field of interest, you will feel right at home. Africa University has a vibrant and multicultural student body, offering you a range of facilities, both in and outside the classroom. Our dining hall provides for more than 11 different menus with cultural diversity. Should you need accommodation, Africa University caters for a number of residence options. Whatever your level and whatever your sport, at Africa University, you'll find plenty of opportunities to stay active. Our excellent sports and fitness facilities will help you stay on top of your game in an environment that promotes a proactive approach to sport, recreation, health, and well-being. Every year, the university gets multi-talented athletes from among the student body and staff. Their sporting backgrounds are as varied as their nationalities. Some have represented their countries and have received awards in the process. Enroll with us for our March or August intakes. Africa University, investing in Africa's future. All right, so welcome back to African Student Voices, the most educative and informative student show ever on AAU TV. I'm your host, Ajemona Chudako, and today we're discussing extracurricular activities, its impact on students. Well, me in the studio today are beautiful people, beautiful ladies, and then a very cute gentleman from um, our institution in Africa. So I have close to me Abu Dwadenu um, Kira MFA Engred from Valley View University. And I have um, Derek Kenneth Bansa, also from the Ashton University. And Kanye Yunis from the University of Professional Studies, Accra. Guys, welcome to African Student Voices. Welcome, welcome. Maybe we can do it over there. <laughs> All right, so welcome to African Student Voices. How has it been so far, Kira? What have you been up to so lately? Um, I'm currently doing an internship at Association of African University, okay. and I'm part of the ITT. Mm, you, look, you look IT, you know, we can tell. 
How about you, um, Derek? Um, thank you for having me, Mr. Juman. Um, right now, I'm doing an internship for the AAU, and I'm part of the IT team as well. I'm currently going to my final year in HSC, and I'm happy to be here for great, the interview. Great, great, great. All right, so Eunice, how's it like? What have you been up to lately? Thank you, Rajaman. I'm doing my internship as the um, marketer at the Association of African Investors. Okay, so you're doing your internship as a marketer at AAU. Yeah. All right, all right. So let's begin, let's begin. Um, you know, today's topic is really highly anticipated. It's about something that people have debated so many times on either we should promote it or we shouldn't promote. It's about extracurricular activities. So I want to find out from um, you, Kira, what do we mean when we say extracurricular activities in the first place? Thank you, Ajima. Um, I think the extracurricular activities are acti activities that are partaken outside the classroom. Okay, so um, basically, why is it so, of, so much of importance on campus? Why do these management heads put in so much investment to making this extracurricular activities work on campus? Why do you think is that important? I think um, in school, Students encounter a lot of stress while learning, while following lectures. So um, I think these activities can uh, give them some break from all the stress. And also um, they can socialize with their other colleagues, with other people. And I think this has some of the importance of uh, extracurricular activities. Okay, so talk of... Um Socializing with friends, releasing stress. Let's come to Derek. Uh, in your case, how do you find extracurricular activities affecting you personally on campus? How well does it affect you on campus? Um, in my opinion, I, for me, I think extracurricular activities helps you to take tension of the stressful life in the class and also what you consume during the day from your lectures and stuff. And it can improve you in so many ways from building your soft skills to having new relationships being those that you can use in the future. I mean, you could be leaders in various um, clubs or events you take part in your school and it goes a long way to improving you as a person. Mm. Yeah. So. You know, you know, it's your, your prime um, act, your prime purpose on campus is to study hard and then graduate with, the, with a good, um, great point. But you find something extracurricular that comes to take some of your time um, into all these activities. How does blending extracurricular activities and then your academics primarily help your grades? How does it help better your grades? Okay. Um. I think it has positive effect on my grades. Really? Tell us, tell us how. Okay. Um, based on the activities I engage in, it helps me to learn a lot. Yes. Maybe um, we do have programs, um, e like educative programs. We do invite people to come and then talk to us and then doing um, other stuff. Okay, fine. The role I play in some clubs, that is um, a secretary to a club in my campus, UPSA, um, Idea Factor, okay. and I'm their secretary. So with that, um, I'm now learning um, secretarial skills, which will have um, impact on me in terms of academics. What do you do as Idea Factor? You know, even though we're trying to promote extracurricular activities, we have to know the purpose of these um, agents that play, that help us have these activities. What do you do as secretary in Idea Factor? What is it about in the that club? Okay, Idea Factor is a club that groom students in terms of leadership governance and then entrepreneurship. Basically? Yeah. Okay, so that is the benefit you get from it. Yeah. All right, so Kira, what about you? 
um, at Value View, what are some of the extra activities do you engage in and how has it helped you so far? I'm basically engaging a singing group, Shekina Singing Group. Shekina Singing Group. Yeah, and we are a singing group of international students and we sing in different languages, English, French, Spanish, Portuguese. So um, I think since I'm in this group, I've been proving my uh, vocal um, skills and also I've met people so that's basically. You mind giving us a line of your songs, perhaps in French or Spanish? Give, give us a line, one line. A line. Um, Which language would you sing for us? Which language? I think French. French, let's go. Okay. Je fidèle, tu ne changes pas. Wow, that's that, that's touching. That's touching. That's so so touching. You know, I wish I wish I was with you over there so we can also <laughs> sing some of these songs in those multiple languages. All right, so we're still talking about extra activities, and then that is what you've been doing, right? Yeah. Singing. What about our singing? Apart from singing with your friends from other countries, what else do you do at campus? Hmm. I don't really take part of um, extracurricular activities. I prefer staying in my room and <laughs> perform my own activities. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll talk about why you, you are really indoors, you know, but trying to participate in other activities. So let's go to um, Derek. You're from a chassis, right? So, but the environment that you're coming from, what are some of the activities that really dominate that extracurricular that you participate in? Um, in HSC, dominant extracurricular activities will probably be the HSC Premier League, it's a football league, mm. the HSC Basketball League, um, Piano Cafe, Debate Club, and the Mad Club, and a lot more. And I take part in the APL and the Photography Club and also the Project Management Club. And it has helped me improve my time management skills as well as my leadership skills and my team building skills. Because I have to relate with other people and also relate with the different cultures from the different backgrounds that people come in with. And generally, they are mostly soft building skills, generally, yeah. There's this perception man, that these activities take so much of students' time than the prime purpose on campus. What do you say to that? I think there again, it depends on what the individual is doing. So if you are partaking in an extracurricular activity and it's taking so much time and it's leading you away from your studies, you might want to cut down on the extracurricular activities because you know you're in school not to just partake in extracurricular activities, but to study, that's the main goal. And then gain either technical skills which you use in the future. So it's subjective. So I would say, because the clubs I'm in, I probably spend like six hours a week mm -hmm. for all the clubs that I'm in. And the one that takes the most time is probably the football. Because you have like training, you have like a meeting, and you have like a match, either every week or every other week. But apart from that, time management is, a huge factor there. It has improved for me because if I know I have, let's say, training tomorrow, I probably want to do a lot of work today so that tomorrow I have time to train and not just relax. So it's been good so far. Kanye, so far you know, you know, it's 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 on on, on the ramp. People are saying that um, students really love 
spending time in these clubs or they love investing more of their time in extracurricular activities rather than paying more attention in the lecture halls. So therefore, we are trying to minimize the rate of these activities on campus so you can have more time for yourselves in the classroom. What is your view on this? Okay, well, I think um, them having, them strategizing the time as in reducing the time students spend on other extracurricular activities and then focusing on coming to lectures. That is um, the, um, the classroom activities. Well, I think it is good. Yes, I think it is good because um, if, okay, for example, myself, yes. yeah, if um, with the activities I partake, aside classroom mm -hmm. activities, yeah. um, at times it do take a lot of time. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. And then if I am not able to strategize my time, if I, if I am not able to plan out my time very well, I'll end up um, wasting a lot of time in those activities, forgetting my education, my, my, um, what I am in UPSA for. Yeah, so I think if they would come out with a strategized time, that maybe this time will be um, given to students for doing any other extracurricular activities, and then there'll be a time for students also in class, yeah, I think it will be a good thing. So this is your, your, your experience personally, that you think that when you go outside uh, the lecture hall to any extracurricular activity, it takes much of your time? Uh, that is, okay, fine. To me, at times it do, but I try to find my way out so that it wouldn't affect my um, academics. Okay. All right, uh, if you just join us, it is African Student Voices, very informative, very educative at this point. We'll have to go for a quick pause and come back. But I need your comments too at this time. You are part of the conversation. So do well to look at the numbers on your screen. The WhatsApp number is plus 233-2790-82563. Add your views. Let's add it to the conversation and let's see how we can also get to a point where we will agree with having Extra curricular activities impacting us the best way or the worst way. We'll be right back. Anyone can get an education, but not everyone gets quality education. It's never too late to acquire it. The University of Lusaka, a modern private university located off Alikinkata Road in Lusaka, Zambia, offers undergraduate, master's, and PhD degree programs in the School of Business and Management, Law, Economics, Banking, and Financial Services, Public Administration, Governance and International Relations, Education, Engineering and the Built Environment, and Health Sciences. Our curriculum is practical and designed to meet the changing needs of employers, business, and society. Because at Unilus, we make students think outside the book. Our driving force is a passion for quality education. We build graduates fit for purpose. Enroll now for January or June intakes. For more information, log on to www.unilus.ac.zm. Welcome back to African Student Voices on AU TV. Today we're discussing the impact of extracurricular activities on students. And if you have your phones with you do well to send in a comment to the numbers on your screen. It is plus 233-279-082-53. Add your views to it. Let's go back to the discussion, guys. Let's go back. So earlier, we were discussing about some of the things that you were doing in your schools. Some of the um, extra activities that you, f you taught were good for you. But let's talk about some of the things that we have been seeing around the same extracurricular activities but are not really helping you know one of it will be the parties we have hall weeks we have the src weeks the student council weeks in these um occasions these things are organized we have so many issues happening um, thefts we have attacks we have um 
students being abused and molest, molested, drug abuse also at these uh, uh, gardens. And these are all acts of stress relief, as you mentioned earlier, that we allow them because we want to relieve stress, we want to also try and then have fun for ourselves. And in this way, what is your view about these kind of um, gardens that are that open way for such vices to go on? Kira, tell us. What, what is your view on that kind of gathering? Because it is also part of the extracurricular activity category. Well, um, I myself, I don't take part of um, the part in these parties, but um, I think extracurricular activities should not hurt the students. Okay. So um, there are parties that people don't get hurt in. But there are some parties that people get hurt. So I think um, the organization, the people who organize the party, they should be aware of these kind of things that happen and um, organize parties that doesn't hurt. You know, the, the, the issue is some of these gatherings are tempting, right? Nobody on a normal day would go hurt somebody. Okay, but when we see the, the environment, the ambience, the music, the alcohol, the, 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 the youthful exuberance, all those kind of peer pressure, pressure activities, we feel like, okay, let's try and do something to ourselves. And that is how it happens. So if I ask that, do you think that all extra characters should be given the go ahead or some of them should be suppressed because of some of the effects that a has of students. What do you view on that, I think, to a large extent, extracurricular activities are good. The minor extent where it's bad is when students circumvent different ways that cause harm to both themselves and to others. Like you mentioned, alcohol, for example. We both know, I mean, alcohol can be very influential negatively, yeah. and there should be measures that institutions should take to restrict alcohol, for example, so that it doesn't cause negative harm to others and themselves. But apart from that, I think extracurricular activities are good because they've both helped people, let's say international students, find comfort and feel at home, find new friends and feel like, yeah, okay, they can actually relate to the environments they are in now. So I believe to a large extent it's good. Okay, so I want us to narrow it down to entertainment. Entertainment as part or as an extra curricular activity. So now we are going to talk about the entertainment bit of it. How do you understand entertainment and how do you think that we should exhibit it as an extra curricular activity on your campus, basically where you're coming from? How can we entertain students without having them abuse drugs? or having them do anything that will go against the school's values, or your school's values, basically. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think for entertainment, um, there are a lot of activities that could be done to entertain students. Aside party, party, okay. parties, and even with the parties, even if um, it will be part, I think there should be rules governing it. That is, if you want to have a party, things you are allowed to do and things you are not allowed to do. Yeah, I think with that one, um, with the troubles it causes, it might help reduce it. But then with the other activities that can entertain students, all in the name of partying, I think. Um, Institutions can plan to um, organize uh, show um, talent shows. Yes, so maybe you come and then you exhibit your talent, what you, you, you think you find passion for, what you love doing. It could be singing, it could be dancing, it could be um, um, reciting of poems and those things. I think it's good. It can also help. Okay, so you find your video which you eliminate those party stuff. Yeah. I hope okay, your friends won't get you on this one. Not, not, not really, um, not to 
um, eliminate it, but then to have rules that will govern it. So that at least things that we think it's, it's, it is part, um, things that we think um, it is the reason why when we have um, entertainment, it causes problems, at least it can be reduced. On this one, because mm -hmm. the minimum, I agree with you that there should be rules engaging this. So, Kira, let's talk about um, other matters on the trouble caused with the parties. What is the case study on your campus when it comes to entertainment wise? How is entertainment on your campus? Uh, well, I have to specify that. My institution is Valais University, yes. and we are an STA institution, so we are more focused on um, Christianity. Okay. And so um, our entertainment activities, nothing. For now, nobody was hurt in our entertainment activities. So um, I think in our school, Intimate activity really helps students. And so we have activities like movie night. Movie night. So we come, we watch movies, we eat popcorn. Okay. So um, that's a really good activity. Then people share their views about movie, the movie we are watch, all watching. And Which movies do you watch? Oh, um, for my department week, we watch a movie about um, computer stuff. Okay. So, I don't really remember the name, but it was actually a nice movie and we all enjoyed it. Okay. So, let's come to Derek. How was entertainment on Ashesi campus and how do you engage yourself in it? Um, on Ashesi, so I'll say we have different people from different backgrounds and cultures. So we try as much as possible to have different clubs okay. that every member in the institution can fit in. So, like the International Students Club is mostly international students because they might want to calm down and then also find out how they can settle down and then feel at home. We have other clubs like the football club I mentioned, the debate club, the piano cafe club. And all these clubs help students come out of their shell and exhibit put their skills and their talent and also make new friends and then feel at home, which is important because all these things can influence one's psychology also where they are and feel. It's more of an affable environment, so everybody is comfortable. So how about your, your parties? The party content of this, of this whole conversation is that how do you see your parties? Is it that type that's caused more trouble with the, 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 the act of alcohol, drugs? How is it like over there? Okay, on a Chelsea campus, alcohol and drugs are illegal. So it's, a, it's policies that have been put in place to check alcohol and drugs and it's not entertained. So most of the parties are monitored so they don't go overboard and of course damages to individuals, yeah. Okay, so then let me come to um, Eunice. Um, should you think that um, extra curricular activities should be made mandatory? Everybody should have a part in it or not? Okay. Well, I think, no. No from you? Yeah. Why? Because it's a stress reliever. You, you mentioned earlier that it helps us to relieve stress. It helps us to... Fine. The, the reason why I said no okay. is because of the entertainment aspect. Okay. Is it about every other um, extra um, curricular activities or only the entertainment aspect, party, party aspect? Okay, so I think you, you help us. You specify for us because you know the, the good ones that can help. So then the bad ones that can, that can not really help us. Okay. So to me, I think in general, it should be mandatory. All like all other activities 
should be mandatory for students to partake. Yes. What do you think will be the benefit to however students participate in um, idea factor, debating, soccer club, volleyball, all those um, several uh, extra activities on campus? Okay, well, it will benefit the individual. It will, okay, fine. In terms of their social skills, sure. um, it will help them network, get to know a lot of people. And then, for example, um, maybe someone from Togo comes to Ghana to school in my school, UPSA, right. and the person engaged um, the person engages himself in um, extracurricular activities. The person will get to know um, how we do our things in Ghana, which will not be taught in classroom. So it will help if they make it mandatory. And then depending on what you would um, go for. Yes. Okay. So. Um a comment just came in from um, one Alex Hayford. Um, he is saying that he's from KNUC. He just said that sometimes uh, universities should allow only extra curricular activities that can be put on the CV. Only. Only those um, activities should be allowed on campus or should be promoted. Apart from that, other activities should be squashed and then place away. What is your view on that, Kira? Hmm. I don't think there should be only um, the activities that can be put on the CV. Like, um, there are activities that are entertainment, for example. I don't think you can put entertainment uh, stuff that you do. Let's say, for example, um, you went in front of your classmates to sing, for example. Um, I don't think you can put that on your CV and it will be relevant for you. You can put that maybe on your hobbies that you like singing, but I don't think it should be, it should have an, an impact on your CV. So you, what, what is your view? You think that any activity that can be placed on a CV or can be added to a CV is worth promoting on campus? other than the others that we can't really add to our CV. What is your, what is your assertion on that? I think um, we should have both activities, activities that can be put on your CV okay. and that can also not be put on your CV. All right. So, Derek, your view on that? Um, I don't think we should restrict extracurricular activities to what you can put in your CVs and what you can't because Individuals that are taking part in an activity. You can never know what skills you might harness to use in the future. So, like my colleague said, if you are in, if you are into entertainment, let's say there's a party, you can be an MC at a party. If you are applying for a job and say an MC, you might be like, oh, maybe if you have good communication skills because you're speaking to a crowd of people. So that can be put in I don't think you restrict extra curricular activities to what you can put in CV and what you can't. Because we we'll have to now categorize that and we don't know what you can't put in the CV. All right, so we have um, another comment from Anointed um, from KNUST. And it reads that although highly beneficial, many students are deterred from participating in extracurricular activities, mainly because they feel pressure to stick to their books. Any other thing, society terms a distraction. Well, what is your view on that? She's saying that although it's highly beneficial, many students are deterred from participating in these extra activities because many they feel pressure to stick to their books. There's this temptation that you know uh, when it's good to put yourself in, but when you get so caught up into it, you can't really have time for your books. What do you think about what Anointin is saying from KNUST? What is your view on that? You, you, you okay. can well, to some people, it is true. It is very true. When they um, allow themselves to um, 
like when they allow themselves so much in entertainment, that is the um, other curricular activities, it do take out their focus. That is why they are on, um, what they are on campus for. And I think it is true. And it all depends on the individual. If you really want to engage in other extracurricular activities to help you improve on your academics, I think you have to discipline yourself. Yes, the more you enjoy, the more you sit in front of your books to learn. Okay, so we have this one too from KY, from UPSA. It says that one way or the other, extra curricular activities equip students with knowledge they wouldn't acquire from books if it's balanced with the books, it's a positive impact. So Derek, how about this one? Do you think that all of the extra curricular activities are going to help us or going to help students to keep up with their books? Is there a way it helps, you know, according to what KY is saying? Um, I think I agree with KY because it all comes down to your priorities and time management. You can't decide that, oh, I'm going to drop everything I do with my books and then participate in all the clubs. It depends on your interest and you have to know why you are doing that particular strategy. You don't, you don't get up at the peer pressure, you just follow your colleagues because you're going to do it. So it all comes down to how it affects you and influences you. And if you use, it, if you use what you do positively from the clubs that you join, it goes a long way to influence what you do in your spare time or in the classroom during your own personal time. Yeah. Okay, so he, um, Kira, what, what, what would be your view holistically on every university that you've heard of? You've heard about what happened to UPSA, what happens in Ashesi, and even what's happening in front of you. If, there were to be, if you were to suggest more of these extra curricular activities on your campus, what, what or what would you want to include? Uh, well, I think um, I would like our head, in my school for example, I would like them to include activities like, um, I think what my colleague mentioned, we don't have such activities in our uh, school like photography or idea Idea factor. Idea factor. So it would be good to have that in our school. And I think um, our heads should think about having more activities that will help the students and balance that activities in the various All right. So Derek, how about you? If there's something that you think you should, you have the power to add to your extracurricular activities, what would it be? <laughs> Let me see. I'll probably probably think there should be more activities that allow students to probably put themselves out there, not just in the school. So maybe they should expand into making students with various talent and skills known outside. Not just probably technical skills. It could be singing, it could be photography, it could be sports related, but yeah. And I'm not saying that there aren't those opportunities, but there should be more of that. All right, yeah. so how about you, Eunice? Um, what are some of the activities you think that UPS should have as part of their current extra curricular activity lineup? Uh, I think um, <laughs> uh, exhibition of talent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's been a great time having you, but I know I want you to have your last chance with students all over Africa, telling them what you think they should be doing or how they can manage themselves amongst these numerous extracurricular activities. So last word from you, um, Eunice, tell Mr. your camera what you think the African students should really focus on trying to blend these extracurricular activities and also the academics as well. All right, so um, I think we have to be self-disciplined. We have to discipline ourselves in all aspects. If you want to party, party. If you want to learn, put all your time 
you do do and die yeah you try learn hard that is if um you enjoy singing you enjoy um playing football you give in your best if it is um after that when you come back to your to your books you have to um give in your all and then try to hit the um try to hit your priority while you are in school thank right. you yes there are your last words um, i want to say usually what you love doing comes easy to you so whatever you're doing in school should be linked to what you are passionate about so if you like maybe reading you can go into something that's do writing journalism i don't know if you like sports you can have something to do with sports communication but your passion should be learning what you do so it comes easy to you in school not you should follow your passion not the passion your parents give you all right all right yes kiri your last words um for my life last words i would say that um if someone wants to partake in extra curricular activities, he should partake to these activities, but he should be conscious about what he, um, what he wants and his priorities too. So like my colleagues said. All right. So as you just had it, um, you need to say that try and then have time for your entertainment or whatever activity you're engaging in, but when it comes to your books, give it your all. Derry says that, it is good. Follow your passion, but don't be, don't go beyond it and make it something that can take you away from your prime purpose. Kira says that yes, be very conscious, be very conscious and disciplined, so that you don't end up getting yourself in trouble. But I also have to say that as much as we need these extra curricular activities on campus, we also have to be mindful that it is for stress relieving. It is also to help us network and not to also cause trouble or vices that is where your educative and informative student talk show africa's Women voices brings us next time we'll talk about something more interesting keep following us on social media keep bringing your comments and also keep watching au tv i was your host Ajemona Chudako. see you next time on africa's Women voices bye